And believe it or not, brother, I could not sleep this night. I could not sleep. All my heart was aching inside me. I, I want to know who are these people? Who passed them to who? How much they pay for them? Where is it going? But I could not open my mouth because we were in a mission trip. Heaven was us. Uh, 7,000 Bibles and uh, uh, 1,200 uh, Gospel of John. <laughs> yeah. And we were going to Iraq. Yeah. We were going to Iraq. Yeah. I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. And it broke my heart to know that was a line of slaves inside Kuwait Airport. Mm. I, just, mm. I just couldn't help it. So mm. uh, the slave still exists today, uh, not just the last 1,400 years. Yeah. Let's continue with our presentation. Please, yeah. And we have one more piece here for our audience to watch. Comparison yeah. between the West, slavery in the West and slavery in Islam. While almost all the slaves shipped into the Americas were for agricultural work, most of the slaves sent to the Middle East were for sexual exploitation in harems or for military service. What a great purpose. I mean, what a great difference in the purpose of having the slave. <coughs> almost all those who come to America is to do farming. And they brought entire families. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to see about more, more about this. Okay. And they continue to have family. Yeah. But in the Middle East, in Islam country, yeah. they were what? Mainly women for the purpose of sex. And even as we see, the men were taken, they were put into the front line of fighting to yeah. be killed yeah. instead of the Muslim men and women, as we're going to yeah. see in the next one. Or to be eunuchs over the harem, right? We have this already also proven yeah. here in, in our presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Here is a picture, uh, we can all see it together on the screen. Uh, this picture is showing a, uh, a farmers working in America. That's, a, by the way, a true picture, yeah. uh, black and white, obviously, because they did not have <coughs> color then, of yeah. uh, slaves working in the farm. Uh, another picture, we have seen it in actually our seven, first half, is also a slave working in a cotton field. Yeah. So that was the main purpose of having slave in the West to work in the agriculture sure. in the farming. Sure. Uh, let's continue with this slide here. <clears throat> While many children were born to slaves to the Americas, and millions of their descendants are citizens to this very day, very few descendants of the slaves that ended up in the Middle East in survived. Middle. You know, all of those millions of, mo of black Africans that went to the Middle East, you go to these places like uh, Baghdad or whatever, you don't see many black people. They're there. A few. But, but you know what? The ones that I ever met mm. in Iraq, when I, when I went there, I've been to Iraq nine times, then none of them were born there. All of them came from Africa to work there. I didn't meet one uh, black African who was a descendant of a slave. And you know why? As we come coming up in, the, in this, continue with the history, yeah. the historical perspective, why we do not have any slave in Egypt. I mean, we know we have market in Cairo until, yeah. uh, until a few years ago. They were not allowed to live, to have the family. They were not allowed to be married, to have children. Of course, if you have a slave and you pay 50 bucks in him or 100 bucks in him, and he will work, 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 work until he turns 65, 70 for you, and then he dies. Yeah. He does not have a wife. He does not have children. Kiss him goodbye. There's nothing come after this. Mm. If you, if you, if you can count how many black in America today. Yeah. The black families which exist in America today, which they are citizens of United yeah. States of America, are President a great proof, of America, of course. Are a great yeah. proof that they had life, yeah. even though they were in slavery. Yeah. They were able to have family, have children. Do you enjoy watching this live show? Well, well let, let me ask you a question, Osama. Sure. <laughs> How likely is it today that a black African could become uh, the president of, say, Iraq or <laughs> Syria or Jordan uh, or one of those nations? Uh, maybe a zero chance. <laughs> zero chance is a close number. Now, why is that? Because abd and slave and black is one oh. thing in Islam. We, uh, 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 you, you're going to see when we, when we get to Islamic part, why Muslims have no right even to live. Are you going to talk about uh, the fact of, of the word abid and how that's used? Slaves. Because I, I'll tell you this real quick, and, and maybe this lady's watching. I mm. had a, a I, I pray for this lady. Um, mm. I, her name will come to me in a minute. I, Becky or somebody, I forget her name. Sandy. Her name mm. was Sandy, and she was emailing me. Yes. Uh, apparently, she's an American convert to Islam. Yeah. And she lives down close to where you are, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And she was emailing me. She said she married an, an Arab guy, from Muslim guy from Syria. Yes. She's defending Islam, you know, every, every which way. She doesn't know Islam. She's going to answering-christianity.org uh, -christ yeah. and just cutting and pasting. And, I, and I, she was talking about how slavery 
was an issue, uh, you know, with Christianity. And I was like, oh, boy, you know, and I will bring some of this information that sure. you have to her. Yeah. And I said, do you realize what Arab Muslims call black people today? She said, well, they call them black people. No, I said, no, no, they call them Abid. Yes. And what does Abid mean? Slave. You know, and I, it's to my shame. Now, I'm not a Chaldean. You know, mm. I, I'm not an Arab. I'm an Arab Christian, but I don't come from a Christian background. Yes. The Arab Chaldean, or the, 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 the Arabic-speaking Chaldeans, Assyrians, Copts, whatever, you know what they call blacks? No. Abid. <laughs> so it's most everywhere. Of them, most of them. It's everywhere. Yeah. Arabic. Should, now, 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 Aswad. There's a term Aswad. We could call black people Aswad. Aswad, yeah. And that's what but I, that's I use it. But ninety percent of either Arab, Arabic-speaking people I know, Muslims, Christians, whatever, they call them Abid. Now, why would Arabic-speaking people call black people Abid because, today, slaves? Why would know, they do that? Because Islam teaches some Allah made to be slave and some Allah made to be free, as we're gonna read in the Quran and in the Hadith. Go right ahead. Man. Coming up, uh, let's continue with the historical uh, perspective of slavery, and we have this slide but, here. By the way, I'm sorry, I sure. have to say, she didn't believe me, of course, uh, yeah. and I said, go ask your husband from Syria what Abid means. You know what he told her? Yeah. He said, well, yes, Abid means slaves. He said, but no Arabic-speaking Muslim would ever use the term Abid to talk about a black person. <laughs> I said, you need to get... That's, that's good. You know, I'm yeah. glad you mentioned this because I'm going to give you yeah. the top scholar, th scholar thinker, mm -hmm. the, the best what we got, we got Ibn Khaldun. And let's hear what Ibn Khaldun think. Yeah, I want... Of black yeah, people. Yeah. The Mukadima. Ibn Khaldun literally will make your heart broke. He will make you cry not water but blood for the love of the black people. Mm -hmm. But let's continue with the rest of our uh, seminar here with yes. our teaching and the historical perspective in, uh, in the West and comparing the West and Islam to slavery. While most slaves who went to the Americas could marry and have families, most of the male slaves shipped to the Middle East were castrated and most of the children born were killed at birth. Now, now, let me just tell our Arab Christian viewers and others what castration means is they would cut off the men's sexual organs. They'd cut them off just so they, so they know what we're talking about. And in the Quran, by the way, Muhammad allowed his female to be with or around the men when they do not have the private, uh, sexual private part, the penis. And, and because did these, obviously, did... because he's not going to uh, have sex with them because he can't. It's over for them. That's 80 to 90 percent uh, mortality rate. What do you think? Uh, uh, Muslim slave traders get a black African, march him through the Sahara Desert, in the middle of the desert, cut off his sexual organs. It's not like they had a hospital, you know. No, 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 no. Uh, how, how likely is he going to make it? That's how, that's how many of them have died. I mean, my that's goodness. That's from the surgically. Yeah. Even, do you know that, uh, that uh, uh, um, what do you call this? Uh, I don't know, the word in my head to uh, the difference between a Gentile and, and, and Jew, sexually. Yeah, yeah. The, what the things would he do to the male? The circumcision. Oh, circumcision. You know how many children female circumcision causes life? Just to circumcise the female in the Muslim world, how many of them die through the circumcision surgery, I which know. is a very simple surgery? Can you imagine removing the entire penis? Oh, my. Oh, my. I don't know how any of them live. Well, I mean, it's amazing. But here's the difference between slavery in the West and slavery in Islam that... Uh, uh, the, the slave who come to America, they had family. Yeah. Uh, the master allowed the slave to have a wife and they have children, and that's why we do have a black American today. Yeah. But in Islam, obviously, uh, slavery was a little bit different story. They yeah. did not really allow them, and the children who were born to them do not want to keep them alive because they don't want them to grow to have a nation in their land, and then they will maybe uh, revolt and cause us... Uh, Chaos later. And in, there in the was country. revolts, weren't there? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's continue a little bit more. Here yeah. we go, as we yeah. see on the screen. In the West, we see... <clears throat> it is estimated that as many as 11 million Africans were transported across the Americas, 95% to Central or South America, and 5% to USA. That's an amazing statistic right there. Only Absolutely. 5% to the USA. But here, here is a problem. Yeah. Why is the Muslim world, why is the uh, Muslim in America speak very 
too much about slavery in America because this country is blessed. Yeah. And it's not blessed because slave is here, because slave is the one who works on the farm, and slave is the one who feeds the white people. Mm -hmm. And if it's not for slave, w the white will die. This country is blessed because this country honored God, and so many people honor God in this slavery issue that they even fight to die to free the slave people. Yeah. To yeah. see? That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. And we're talking about only 5% and in the USA, in the 50 state. Let's, just, let's compare this to the in Islam. Okay. However, nearly 30 million Africans were enslaved in the Muslim Middle East. Since 80% of those captured by Muslim slave traders died in transport, it is estimated that over 110 million Africans died in the Muslim slave trade. So actually that means that the Muslims, according to these estimations, mm -hmm. enslaved 140 million Absolutely. Africans. Yes, indeed. And the number of slaves who came here is 11 million. Yeah. 10% of them died. 10%. So we only got actually 90% of still alive. Yeah. In Africa, so from Africa... So that would Africa, be 33 million total. The total, uh, close, no, yeah. no. 10% plus 11, 11 million. So oh, okay. we're talking about 12, 13 million people. Okay. That's the total of those who came. I will even shoot for 15 million. Okay. Uh, and but 5% end in America. 80% die of 110 million plus 30 million who survived to go and live in the land of the Middle East. What a huge difference between 11 million or 110 million. Hmm. And that's what I'm saying, uh, Brother Joseph, from the beginning. I'm shocked. Why we do not have, uh, if we can have four or five movies about slavery in America, we should have 500 movies about slavery in the, way, in, in the Middle East, slavery well, in Islam. Well, why aren't there any? Um, you know, isn't it interesting, isn't it amazing how Satan works in the Muslim world, they, nobody can get away with it. They'd be killed or imprisoned. And uh, in the Western world, the liberals are so out to lunch on the truth that they refuse to condemn anyone except white Christian America. You know, this is not just about slavery. Yeah. It's about everything. Yeah. Uh, women's rights. Yeah. Excuse me, women's rights? Yeah. They're talking in America about women's rights? I would like to talk to those who talk about women's rights, and I say, how about human rights? Yeah. How about if I take you to my home country, Egypt, and you show me where is the human right? Do you know, Brother Joseph, cats and dogs, yeah and rats mm -hmm. in America mm -hmm. have more rights than people in the Middle East. Sure. Let, me say, let me say it again. Yeah. Cats and dogs and rats, all these pets we have in our homes in America here, have more rights than Muslim men and women in the Middle East. Well, call Muslim. me a liar, call me a liar. You know, I have a dog. Yeah. My dog, her name is Sadie. Mm -hmm. Sadie is seven years old. Yeah. Sadie go to the dentist and uh, my beloved wife spent $130, $140 just to clean her teeth. Yeah. My yeah. dog, clean her teeth twice yeah. a year and spend this money on her. When Sadie gets sick, my wife immediately takes her to the doctor. Yeah. When Sadie this, when Sadie that, I feel like I have another dog. It's, a, it's just a dog. But, but how about this? Even more so, most states, if you beat a dog... It's crime. It's a crime. You can punish well, him. But what about in the Middle East if, if a Muslim, Muslim man beats his Muslim wife? That's normal. As Allah, that's it's see, commanded the, by so the Quran. The, the reason we don't talk about the beating of females in the Middle East is because you don't want to stand against the teaching of Allah in the Quran. You don't want to make Islam look bad. Then just we keep our mouth shut and keep going with life. Now, let me ask you a question. If my dog hit by a car mm -hmm. and died in America, and I didn't even know, if she ran from the house and hit by a car, would the people just throw her body or what do you do? They look at her uh, leash and around her neck yeah. and they, she has the name Sadie Dak dog on it. Yeah. And there's a number there, they call, and we will have Sadie back. Yeah. And we'll have a, a funeral service for her. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I've seen this happen to many of my friends. Yeah. And they will bury her in honor and, and respect. Yeah, yeah. And they will put a cross above her body. <laughs> they saying, who's that here? A dog. Oh, I'm sorry. You know? uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. let's go in the West. Yeah. And in, in the Middle East, and no kidding, by this eyes, my brother, I saw a, a, a fisherman pick up a body, a dead body from inside the canal running by our homes. The policeman came from the station. He looked at the body, turned it over, turned it over, put it back inside the bag, and put the bag in the water. My, my dear, my dear friend, my dear friend, that dogs and cats in America have more rights than human in the Middle East, and God is my witness.